Okay, a lot to unpack talking about the U.S. economy, and for that, we turn to Thomas Hayes. He is the founder, chairman, and managing member of Great Hill Capital, an equity management company based in New York. Thomas, great to have you on. I certainly appreciate it, and a lot, as I mentioned, to get to. Overall, the report, very encouraging. I want to get your takeaway from it. Uh, American consumers obviously spending. Do they have the money? Uh, what about this latest data? What are the bright spots, and what areas, if any, do you think are out there for concern? Well, the good news, Sean, is that when the U.S. consumer has a job, they spend money. You never want to bet against the U.S. consumer. What we are seeing in terms of mixed results is companies like Dollar General that cater to lower income consumers are really getting hurt. That stock had its biggest one day drop, I believe, ever today wow. uh, because the lower end consumer is struggling a little bit. Little bit. You're seeing with the fast, lower end fast food restaurants in the value wars trying to offer lower and lower prices for those consumers that are hurting the most. And then at the upper ends, you saw Best Buy today have one of its best days ever because more and more people are buying AI PCs and refreshing their PC cycles. So it's a tale of two cities. But on balance, we saw with that GDP number, things are generally OK. Let's talk a bit more about the tale of two cities, because anytime you have a wealth gap, that's obviously a reason uh, for concern. What about the do-it-yourself uh, operations, Home Depot uh, entities such as that? Because frequently, in, in, when times are tough, people will try to do it themselves rather than hire out a, a, a contractor. Do we see anything like that? Yeah, I think these will do well. They're kind of insulated. Their businesses are broad enough. But what's really going to benefit the Home Depots and the Lowe's of the world uh, and even some of the companies that are suppliers there, like the Stanley Black & Deckers, the Generac is lower interest rates. That is going to reignite housing. That's going to reignite projects. That's going to reignite construction. That is a big deal that's coming to a theater near you. <laughs> the Fed is going to start cutting in September, and they are going to be one of the initial immediate beneficiaries. Well, for all those folks out there who do work construction, that's great news for them. Let's talk about the data for the labor markets as well. Clean energy jobs doing well. But what's the overall state of the labor market right now, especially given other recent information that shows the U.S. economy simply did not add as many jobs, any kind of jobs, good jobs or, or, or however you want to classify it, as previous readings? Yeah, that was a big shocker for a lot of people, the 818,000 downward revision over the year. Uh, what we're finding, though, is the Fed has a dual mandate, and they've now shifted their focus uh, they were exclusively, folk, I would say, exclusively fo focused on inflation. They have now shifted. And what's caused them to move is their concerns about the labor market, the initial jobless claims that Karina mentioned. Right. While it came in better than estimated, they are elevated. And the Fed has their eye on it. And that's why they're going to go in September, because that is a lot harder to recover once it starts falling apart. OK, we also know wages have come up in, in the past year or so. but. The price of groceries has gone up 21 percent. The price overall of, of, of goods about 19 percent. But still, the economy has been boosted by this consumer spending. It comes as a surprise, given the prices that I just talked about. So what is driving consumers? Uh, is this their confidence out there that we're going to turn the corner? I think there's something to, to that, that. Number one, they have jobs. Number two, they are deleveraged. If you look at the deleveraging, a debt service as a percentage of disposable income. Uh, it's really fallen off of a cliff since 2009. It's come down and down and down. The moral of the story is people have a lot less debt. They have a lot more cash. And albeit there is a demographic at the lower end that's uh, starting to struggle and we're seeing defaults spike up and auto loans and things like that, by and large, 80 some odd percent of the population is doing generally mm. OK, but a little bit worried. And that's why the Fed has taken a move. They don't want to see layoffs start. Uh, right. There had been some data out two weeks ago that the unemployment rate, if you back out the immigration, could be as potentially as low as 3.6, 3.7%. Uh, it's the immigration that has uh, caused the 4.3% print as of present. You know, we really can't talk about all this new data without talking about the upcoming U.S. election. Uh, Kamala Harris has made it clear she really wants to target price gouging. Uh, Donald Trump has been looking overseas, uh, wants more tariffs, especially on China, uh, coming in. What are your thoughts on the U.S. rates? What are people looking at to distinguish themselves from an economic standpoint, from these two candidates? 
Well, look, the name of the game is, as, as it relates to stock markets and generally the economy, is everyone does better when there's gridlock, i.e., no one power has, no one party has too much power. So uh, as it relates to uh, taxing unrealized capital gains, that's a bad idea. If I was going to write a book called How to Cause a Great Depression, the first chapter one would be entitled Let's Start Taxing Unrealized Capital but Gains. But isn't that because something, but hang on a second, isn't that taken out of context to a degree? Because as I understand it, it's just aimed at people who have $100 million or more. Yeah, and the people that have $100 million or more are the people who invest in companies that create jobs. And if you take away their incentive to invest in companies, you're going to have a lot less jobs. So I don't think that will get through Congress. So I don't no. think that's a material thing. Uh, as it relates to Trump, on the other hand, uh, threatening tariffs, he did the same thing in his first term. What we saw was that Chinese relations, uh, certainly Chinese stocks, did a lot better under the Trump administration than they did under the Biden administration. Uh, they actually had one of their worst crashes ever under the Biden administration. So I think the jury is out. Oftentimes, if you make bets based on politics, you lose. Everyone thought energy stocks would do well under Trump. They underperformed. They did well under Biden. Everyone thought solar stocks would go to zero under Trump. They actually did quite well. They did poorly under Biden. So I wouldn't make your bets on uh, politics. I would make your bets on the fact that earnings continue to grow. Estimates are up for plus 15% for next year. So on balance, as long as we have checks and balances and one party does not win all three branches, we're going to be just okay. Okay. Thomas Hayes, good stuff as always. We can't thank you enough. We appreciate it. Thank you, Sean.